What's going on, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to Game Informer. I'm your host, Alex Van Aken, and today we're going to be taking a look at some of this exclusive gameplay footage that we have from Resident Evil 4 Remake, Chapter 5. We're going to be seeing um, some church gameplay, some Ashley gameplay, and um, some of the cabin fight, as well as, uh, you know, um, just overall fighting Ganado and and uh yeah trying to stay alive so we've got about 12 minutes of footage uh here to show you today uh and i'm joined by marcus stewart how are you marcus i'm feeling great i'm happy to be seeing this section again because as i mentioned in the cover story i wrote i had a lot of fun playing it absolutely um so yeah we are this this footage starts out and we are uh you know simply escaping from the church um this is how many hours into the game would you say this is marcus Oh, yeah, it's hard to say because uh, we don't know how long the other chapters are. It's got to be at least a, probably like three-ish hours, I would guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is not our gameplay, by the way. If people are wondering, this is a B-roll Correct. that Capcom provided. So this is someone okay, on the I've team playing, not us. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, we did play through this section, everything that you see today. An important Trust disclaimer, Capcom did help out with accommodations for travel. That means like flights, hotel, in association with this cover trip. We didn't have any of those conversations. Like that's our bosses that handle all that. We kind of just show up and do our job, but it is an important disclaimer. That being said, we are not influenced by that. Roost, I've secured Baby Eagle. Copy that. Is she okay? Affirmative. Well done, Condor One. I'll dispatch a chopper ASAP. I'm sending you the coordinates for the extraction point. Make your way there, and don't let anything happen to Baby Eagle. Copy that. Hurry. The weather is getting worse. Roost out. So you see the uh, the Hunnigan conversations are in game now, which is nice. Um, yeah, okay. you can kind of move uh, around while it's happening. Yeah, nice shot of the map there. Going to the uh, the helicopter extraction point where nothing will go wrong, I'm sure. Um, and, uh, so yeah, the, in the beginning you saw, uh, Leon and Ashley sort of just talking about like, Hey, we need to get out of here. Uh, fun fact, you know, without spoiling, there's a little extra area in that, uh, upper deck that you can find if you don't want to just beeline it straight for that ladder. Uh, so, you know, keep an eye out up there. I, I found it on my playthrough. Uh, so yeah, we are making our way through here. Leon being a gentleman, moving that out the way because he's all big and strong. Spread out. Okay. Come on. Okay. And yeah, this part was um pretty fun to get through. I tried to get through it stealthily the first couple times. So you're going to notice um, there's going to be a few jumps uh, in the clips here. Again, that's a Capcom thing, so this, is, this isn't going to be a straight run-through of the chapter. It's going to jump around at points, uh, but as you can see, the flash grenade still very effective against those uh, tentacle-transformed Ganado. As we uh, enter the cemetery, you get a little, bit of a, a little bit of a taste of one of the side quests, which is sort of a spin on the cemetery puzzle. As you can see, you can still shoot bird's nests to get those uh, precious eggs, or I guess a chicken egg that's in a bird nest in the tree. Don't ask me <laughs> how that <laughs> works. Uh, you know how it is. But I mean, in the original game, you killed snakes and got chicken eggs, which was always kind of weird. Uh, there he is. Took care of a request. Well done. Man well, himself. Look at you, so you can see you're turning in side quest, which is what you're gonna be doing. One has to wonder how he uh, moves with all that heavy equipment in that coat. Ah, <laughs> you know, it must be pretty strong. It's kind of like a like a Dragon Ball, like Piccolo weighted training gear. He's probably pretty strong. But, uh, mm -hmm. I was thinking he's just like into CrossFit. You know, uh, you know, we 
We, we don't know. He's a mysterious, mysterious figure, as you see. We're upgrading our equipment here. You can upgrade knives now, as mentioned in the cover story, which is nice, which you're going to be needing because they're, uh, they have limited durability. And you're going to be using it quite a bit for the new parry mechanic, which I enjoy. Mm. And you can see there's another side quest right there. You're going to want to keep an eye out in the environment for those blue flyers. Oh, so there's the wild doll quest. That was one of the more involved quests that we saw so Absolutely. far. We need to keep moving. And you won't see the solution um, in this footage, but you will see um, sort of what's on the other end of this side quest for you. Yeah. Um, the dog is hard to find. We, we are going to show the dog, um, but the way to find the dog is will be, I guess, a little bit of a mystery. And also, important to note, we turned left when we left that door. There is another path behind us if we were to turn right out of that door that goes into an underground tunnel that like takes you up through a well in the village. So there's a lot of paths uh, available. Yeah, like when I we both came through here, we just assumed just the way the camera's framed. We're like, okay, this is the it's the only way to go. But yeah, uh, one of the producers pulled us aside and was like, hey, check this out. And we were like, oh, okay. Here we go. We've got the uh, village at night. The lady thought she could uh, take a pitchfork to Leon. Didn't work out for her. And this is a. Uh, I. I, mm -hmm. uh, I was going to just comment on the rain. I know that there's a lot of talk about. Uh, rain gate. <laughs> rain gate. I do agree. I think it's a, it's, um, it can be tuned down a little bit. Um, it does feel like intentionally, like it is intentionally obfuscating the environment um, and kind of adds to that. That tension, like you can't see what you're shooting. I do agree, though. It's it's a bit much. Um, and you know what would be great, Marcus, if there's like a, a rain slider. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah. I just want a nice little downpour as we see. Uh, I love the lighting in this game, you know. Like it just the uh, the, the bloom on the, uh, the, the flashlight and just how dark mm. everything is. Like it just makes them... Um, Especially like interiors like this, if we lift Ashley up to do her, uh, do her thing, get Leon up there. But yeah, it just makes the interiors creepier. Like that, like the first time that owl made me jump because you just see the glowing eyes in the dark. Yeah. And you're like, oh my god, like what is that? There, there. I will say there, there were a couple times when I was playing the demo where I was kind of in a very dark environment and Leon wasn't pulling up his flashlight, which is kind of frustrating. So I'm just kind of like clambering around in the dark. It was mostly like oh. outdoor. Oh, there he there's is. The dog. Look at that thing. It's got like a weird. It looks like a scorpion tail. Now that I'm looking at it again. So yeah, uh, Capcom also pointed out for those wondering that this dog is not the dog that Leon can rescue in the original game because you know in this game he's presumably dead. Uh, so you know at the time we kind of were like, oh maybe this is the dog, but they were very clear to point out like, nope, different dog. And you're like, okay. <laughs> but yeah, that uh, they that dog also fight is pretty hard. They also wouldn't definitively answer if it was the same dog uh, in this game as in the old game. Uh, in terms of the one that's dead at the beginning of the game, they're like, maybe it's not the same dog, and yeah. it's like, okay. <laughs> so you see a blue medallion up there as Leon takes yeah. it out. So you see, it's one of five. So I asked Capcom about that because in the original game it was kind of like fifteen in the same area, and they said that um, that side quest reappears in different parts of the map so you're going to be shooting it sounds like you're going to be shooting medallions outside of just like the village area um and they just sort of like divide them into like batches of five Uh, and due to the cuts, um, there is a lot of that village before the the bridge that we ran over that you can mm -hmm. you know fight through and explore. Like there's a lot that they didn't show in this footage. Um, it's where, at least during our playthrough, the brute first appears, the cow-headed enemy. Um, right. 
in that area just before the the bridge that we crossed. But, um, yeah, because in the footage we've put out of this, you, you, people have seen the cow uh, guy shows up in his fight, here. but you yeah. actually fight him uh, well before this. So yeah, so when he shows like up in the fight, a what were you saying? yeah, he's definitely a, a recurring enemy. But when he shows up in the fight, you've already had to fight him before, and so I feel like it's extra tense because it's like, oh my god, I got to fight this guy now. Um, yes, yeah, so. I saw some people speculating that he might be a single persistent enemy that follows you. I no. pretty sure that is not the case. Yeah, I think he's no, just I, another I have, enemy type. I have killed him several times in different areas. Yeah. Just a new enemy type. So, so this fight was uh, pretty wild as it is in the original, but even more so here. And there he is, Mr. Bullman. It's been a lot of like back and forth. Like, is he a cow? Is he a bull? But I was like, he's got a horn there. That'd be a bull thing. Well, a bull is just a cow. It's a male cow. I mean, yeah, they're the same thing. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, <laughs> but, you know, like bulls have horns. Okay. And, you know. That's fair. That's fair. Listen. He's, he's, he's got a single horn there, it looks like, as Leon just gets pummeled. And, uh, yeah, that's the end of, uh, you know, the action gameplay we've got to show off. This is a look at putting gems inside of um, treasures to increase their value of course if you different combinations of gems net you different uh bonuses uh there are now customized cases that have different bonuses so like the black case uh has an increased drop rate for l resources um yeah. and you, you can you can pick up charms as well a little chicken charm the charms and the cases they they give you little, little passive bonuses yeah, and you can uh, do that stuff in the typewriter menu, as you saw. So you, you can't do that all the time, just when you uh, reach those uh, save points. To keep up with all of our coverage, bookmark GameInformer.com slash Resident Evil 4 and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.